This video is about the second most important item you take with you into the field. We've already talked about the most important item, and it's your brain. Your brain, prepared, alert, aware, and curious. You have to be constantly thinking about the whole process and what is going to work for the witness and the investigation in front of you. The second most important thing in your kit is your plan. The basic idea of the plan is the same whether you're on a site visit or a site recon or on an evidence collection mission. The plan itself will differ from mission to mission depending on a number of factors that we will discuss. Also, you are likely to go off plan at some point. Even though we expect the plan to change, you will be glad you have it with you and that you thought through it before you left. There are a few common sense th things we need to keep in mind as we formulate the plan. We've broken these down to four basic categories, although there may be other valid ways to break it down. We can remember these with the acronym MOST, M-O-S-T. M is for mission. Why are we going, and what do we hope to accomplish? O is obstacles. What is in our way? Are there physical or legal barriers preventing us from going to certain areas? Are there safety concerns we need to be aware of? Is witness cooperation less than perfect? S is for sky. Of course, we need to know what sort of weather to expect and prepare for, but also what else might be in the sky. The phase of the moon, bright stars and planets, sunrise and set times, etc. The proximity of airports and military operations areas and test ranges needs to be noted. Also, if a bright satellite is expected when there, it might be useful for a recreation. T is for terrain. If we have to cross terrain, how rugged, hilly, wet, or hazardous is it? What might block our field of view? How will it affect the range of our radios? What kinds of shoes will be needed? Will insects or wildlife be a problem? How much food and water should we bring along? And so on. Another important consideration is our ethical standards that we discussed in an earlier training video. When we meet a witness, we don't want to create a scene. That means minimizing the size of the team and the amount and size of equipment we take. A big production will draw attention to the witness that we have to assume they don't want. Blend in and keep a low profile. There should be no signs, logos, hats, or any other paraphernalia that tells the world you are a team of UFO investigators drawing attention that we don't need or want. I'm going to get a bit old school here and strongly recommend that put, you put your plan on physical paper and keep it close to hand the whole time you're on your site visit. If possible, get it on one sheet of paper, front and back, or better yet, on one 4x6 index card. Put it in a clear plastic folder to protect it from weather and keep it handy together with your paper maps. You can obtain these map holders from an outdoors equipment store and are recommended if you plan to be on foot for a major part of your visit. We'll talk about maps in another video, but they really are part of the plan. I suggest printing out and annotating key points on a map as well as any driving directions you might need as a backup to a GPS guided application. The plan should be clear and concise and should contain essential information. Here are some of the things you need to consider having in your plan. 1. What is your objective at each site? Will you meet one or more witnesses? Perform a basic recon? Perform a more detailed evidence collection? Engage in a sky watch? Talk to locals or some other activity? What are some of the things you will be looking for? Keep the major objectives to a small number. I would suggest you do not exceed three. Two, who's going with you 
and their essential information, including emergency contacts. You are encouraged to go with a buddy for safety, but take the smallest team that can do the job. Team roles are a good idea as well. Make sure everyone on the team has the same information and agrees on their roles. Three, all the destinations, approximately when you will be there, and about how long. GPS coordinates are a good idea in addition to street addresses. Spend some time in Google Earth to get a sense of the terrain, roads, and viewpoints. Four, for each destination, any persons you need to contact, names, phone numbers, email addresses, etc. Five, if flying or renting a car, then all the relevant information such as confirmation numbers and flight times. Six, how will you access the site or sites? Can you drive right there? Are you needed to hike or bike at some distance? Will you need permission? And if so, from who? If you have a vehicle, where is it okay to park? Seven, basic facts. Weather forecast, sunrise and set, moonrise and set and moon phase, local magnetic declination, local jurisdictions, relevant local laws, military bases, dangerous wildlife, nearest emergency medical facility, etc. Eight, team communication. If using radios, list channel numbers or frequencies and noise reduction codes, including backup channels if interference is encountered. Nine, equipment summary. What kits to take? We'll talk about kitting in a future video, but essentially, you might just need to take a few kits, different recon kits, radio kits, sky watching kits, evidence collection kits, etc. Each of these kits will have its own list that you probably don't need to take on paper since you will check them off when you pack. This is all in addition to your basic everyday carry and personal items. 10. If staying overnight, then where? Include confirmation numbers. 11. Contingencies, illnesses, injuries, bad weather, etc. Does anyone on your team have medical needs that may need to be accommodated? Brief your team on the plan before you leave and give everyone a copy. Also, leave a copy at home with someone you trust, but do not share it with the public, even if you are not meeting a witness. Make sure you know any relevant case numbers, and when you return, scan the plan and put it into the case file. Keep your plan handy all the time. Annotate wherever things turned out differently. Time permitting, please share your plan with API leadership before you leave at least give us a quick email. A brief conference call may help you improve your plan and thus lower your stress level. You will really learn this planning process by doing it. This video is just to get you thinking about the sorts of information you will need in your plan. If you come across any problems for which you need guidance, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm sure that together we can reach a solution. This video is API training material released under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike License. You can use some or all of this video in your own training program, so long as you give API attribution. We'll even be happy to provide you with more source material if that will help. We want everyone to conduct safe, ethical, and successful field investigations.